missing three pairs of footwear and one, two, three handbags for one night away. Might be a little bit over the top. Yeah. nice. Ah, well, you have come along on a very blustery, rather wet, dank, generally bleh evening. Um, but I don't care because I'm going to be packing in a minute and it'll be the first time my little wheelie case has come out of the bottom of the wardrobe since 16th of February. And I know that because that weekend, that's Valentine's Day, and that is Gary and my anniversary. Not our wedding anniversary, the anniversary of when we first met and had our first date. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you that story another time. It's actually quite a funny story, but anyway. Um, so we were in London and um, we haven't been anywhere since. And we were due to fly to South Africa on the 19th of March. And guess what? Well, you know what happened. I mean, the whole world knows what happened. Um, and so, yeah, grounded. And do you know something? I was actually just a little bit relieved. I was really looking forward to going to South Africa, don't get me wrong, particularly as I was going to see two very, very dear friends who I haven't seen for about one of them I haven't seen since her wedding uh, eight, nine years ago. And I haven't met her two children yet at all. Um, so I really did want to go. However, I've got to say that I wasn't really looking forward to packing the case because um, quite honestly, I just live out of suitcase normally, not this year, obviously. Um, but generally speaking, Gary and I are just constantly gadding about all over the bloody place. What with um, all the the visits to friends up and down the country, because everybody, we all kind of, I think everybody started off in London, or rather everybody started off somewhere else, came to London, did their stint in London, and some of us longer than others. I think in our case, it was the thick end of 40 years. So um, therefore, the only time you get to see everybody is if you actually go and have a weekend, or they come here for a weekend. You don't just meet for dinner one evening, because you're not all in the same vicinity. So there's all of those trips and then you get the, um, the, the, the holidays, the actual holidays. And um, I have to say, um, we do quite a lot of those. I never used to, till Gary came along. I was actually very bad about taking holidays. Um, I was always too busy. And also because I was single for such a long time and I've got lots of lovely friends, but um, there are people that you absolutely love, but you know you don't want to go on holiday with them. You know what I mean? Or you do, but they've got a partner and you don't want to be a gooseberry. Or you want to go uh, at a time when they don't want to go, or they want to go at a time when you don't want to go. So it's really complicated trying to get, get a decent holiday when you're single, basically, unless you want to do a singles holiday, which I absolutely did not want to do. And then Gary came along and as in every other aspect of life, my life just opened up because he basically is a fidget. He cannot sit still. He isn't happy unless planning a trip or doing a trip. So um, I think we'd only been together a few months and we were off to Rome. I had the most amazing, absolutely fantastic week in Rome, our first trip away together. Um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of been like that ever since really. And the entertaining as well, ever since we um, bought this place, um, we have been, as well as going and visiting friends where they live, we've also constantly got an, well, an endless stream of friends coming to stay here, which is lovely, which is great. I really enjoy it, I do enjoy it. The only thing is, um, there are only so many weekends in a year and we do tend to get a bit full up in fact, there was a time a while back where I rather drew stumps. Ooh, another cricketing analogy. Ha, 
I don't even know what it means really, but I just know people say it in this context. But I would kind of had enough and called time because um, I felt like I was running an Airbnb. There were a couple of weekends when I was actually doing bed changes on a Saturday because we'd have one lot Friday night and come for dinner, stay over, bugger off Saturday morning and then blow me another lot <laughs> up in the afternoon. <laughs> and it, it did get really, really silly. My husband, oh God, talk about a social butterfly. He just kind of helped himself. He, he's just a born host. He just loves to entertain people. Um, I do as well, don't get me wrong. It's just not all the time, and especially as I'm the one that ends up doing the shopping, the cooking. Uh, actually, to be fair, he does more than his fair share of, of bed changing, and he always washes up, because he, he doesn't approve of the way I do it. Ha! I'm using the male tactic there. <laughs> Works a treat. Um, stack the dishwasher really rubbish, really messy and everything everywhere. And funnily enough, after a little while, you don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> oh dear, he's going to botch this. I'm sussed. Oh, well, never mind. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, yes. So yes, lots and lots and lots of visitors. Oh, and he also cannot, cannot, he's constitutionally capable of turning down an invitation. In fact, I mean, he, read, he double books us on a regular basis um, and it's not unusual for, it, for us to be treble booked. He has actually, on two occasions, quadruple booked us. We were actually supposed to be in four different places at the same time. So, uh, yeah, that's um, interesting. That, that, that makes life quite, quite entertaining sometimes. Not. <laughs> I do try and run our diary, but when I put things in his diary and then he just doesn't look at them and then says yes to something without checking first, well, what can I do? So, um, yeah, you get the picture. I was just, my little weenie case was coming out on a, a such a regular basis that I just thought, oh, here we go again. And all I wanted, and I've, I've said this to so many um, friends over the course of, you know, pre-March, um, over, I don't know, the previous probably year or more, I would love to have a period of time where we're just becalmed. We've got a beautiful home. We're never bloody well here. Well, if we are here, it's a job of work because we're entertaining. But just to chill out, kick back and just enjoy our lovely home, get on with loads of jobs. I've got I had a long, long list of jobs I wanted to do and was never here long enough to do them. Um, and yeah, just be really, just just be and just not busy, not going anywhere, not entertaining, not, you know, just being at home, reading, God, novelty, um, cooking, gardening, all those things. And then Guess what happened next? Well, you know what happened next, because it happened to you as well. It happened to everybody in the entire world. Coronavirus and lockdown. And I got my wish in spades. And uh, unfortunately, it was not really the circumstances in which I would have liked it to have happened. I would have rather to have just had a couple of months where we agreed that we were just going to stay here and not go anywhere without having a global pandemic to do it. But hey-ho, that's what happened. And we loved lockdown. It's not a popular thing to say, I know, because so many people really had a hard time with it. And you know that thing that's doing the rounds on social media that says, no, we're not all in the same boat. Absolutely, we're not. Yeah, yeah, we are in the same storm, but no, we are not in the same boat. Some poor sods are floating around in a dinghy, getting buffeted and so exposed to everything. And some of us are on a cruise liner. Um, you know, for Gary and I, we're retired, so we haven't got to worry about working. We haven't got to worry about kids at school, way beyond all of that. Um, and, you know, we've got an enormous house with an enormous garden backs onto 
an even more enormous garden of, of fields, open fields to go walking in, walk Lulu in. So we could get away from each other when we needed to. Um, and generally, bloody lucky. Just so bloody lucky. So anyway, now for the first time, yeah, for the first time, for a long, 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 long time, I'm really looking forward to doing a bit of packing and getting my wheelie case out of the wardrobe. So let's get packing then. Now, first find your wheelie case. Hello. Hello, have you forgotten me? Yeah, I know it's been a while, mate. It's time to go on a little jaunt. Mm -hmm. This is Justin. Just in case. So called because he's always crammed full of things that I stuff in him just in case I need them. Right, so this is what lives in my case at all times. So I've got duplicates of things that I can just leave it packed so that I've only really got to think about my clothes and I've got all my toiletries and my hair products and all the other things that I like to travel with that just live in there permanently. Um, so first of all, um, and this is a, a set I got, oh God, years ago, actually for my mum. And then I don't know how I came to reclaim them, but this is uh, Ted Baker. Can't you tell? It's definitely got the Ted Baker look. And uh, there are three three bits. There's a big one which I use as a toilet bag. And then the next size I use my all my hair products. And then that one is my makeup. So in terms of what I've got in my toilet bag, um, this is my favourite cleanser. Um, I quite like the Aven range, although the moisturisers are not good enough for me. They're not, I mean, as in they don't moisturise enough because I've got very dry skin. Um, and then this is the micellar water, um, which is what most people apparently use to take their makeup off with for their first cleanse and then use something creamy for the second. I typically do it the other way around. Um, I tend to prefer that. That gets eye makeup off like a dream and uh, mascara and things just float off with that. And then I massage it all over my face and then I take it off with a, a hot wet flannel. Um, and then I use that or actually at home, I generally use um, a toner. Um, usually um, a pixie one. I've got a few of those. I've got the, um, anyway, we'll, we'll do that another time. But uh, for the purposes of traveling, I haven't got one of those in there at the moment. In fact, I probably should put one in there, to be honest. I'm gonna do that right now. I think I've got one in reserve. What's this one? Rose tonic, yep, that'll do. So that's then in for the next time uh what i mean the next time and that's now that's tomorrow um so that's the pixie toner um and then uh in terms of serum the one i've got in here at the moment is a new neostrata one um i've used quite a lot of the neostrata products over time and i, I, I do really like them very very moisturizing that one um, this is my favourite moisturiser of all time. In fact, I am a bit of a Declior girl. Um, my stepdaughter always laughs when I say that. Oh, she's a Declior girl. Um, but I do like Declior products. I've got a lot of Declior products and I've been using them for years. And the Hydra Floral, um, I use the uh, face oil. Um, so that's the moisturiser which I have been using for ever. And actually, on that... Uh, I get these, these are 100 ml tubes. Now, generally you get them in 50 ml glass jars in the um, department stores or online and they're 50 odd quid. And I regularly stock up on these um, from either Look Fantastic or All Beauty or Cult Beauty, very often have deals on these and I think I paid something like 28 quid for a hundred mil which is amazing value and whenever I see one of those offers I buy four and keep them um 
Now, this is another one of my Desert Island products. Kiehl's. Kiehl's does lovely stuff, but I have to say, the only thing I really end up using on a regular basis is this. Every time I go through an airport, I buy a handful of them because they're usually in big glass jars. It needs a bit of wash. Um, and it's, it's a lip balm. However, it is a multitasker. It's a bit like... Elizabeth Arden um, 8 hour cream in the way you use it um, however it hasn't got that horrible smell and it's nowhere near as thick and gunky it's a it's a more oily um, hang on let me show you I have to get better at this one-handed business I watch all the girls doing it and I'm amazed at how dexterous they are with their left hand um, right now it'll probably when I first squeeze it focus sorted probably come out a bit oh no no it didn't it usually comes out a little bit oily on another occasion but this stuff if I'm out and about and particularly in the winter you know when you get that horrible um your face just feels really tight and really dry and particularly under your eyes you get the old crocodile eyes I rub some of this between my fingers so that my fingers are just coated in a sort of a light veil of this stuff of this sort of like an oil and then I pat it on my face over the top of my makeup under my eyes particularly and my skin just drinks it and it is just it just makes you feel really comfortable and I just love this stuff it's a fantastic cuticle oil as well if your hands are a bit dry and you only need such a tiny amount so I've got tubes of this everywhere. Ah, now, this is one I have got to tell you about. This is, oop, a bit of purple shampoo there. I'll get that in a minute. Um, this is my absolute miracle product. I cannot tell you the difference that this has made to my eyelashes. I used to have fabulous eyelashes as a teenager and in my 20s. And then as I got older, they were less lustrous, like it happens as you get older. Then I had chemo and I lost them all. And then when they grew back, they were spiky, short, bleh, horrible, really. I mean, I was grateful to have anything, um, but they weren't great at all. They were nowhere near what they were before. And I was having lash extensions, which is absolutely fatal. Terrible things, absolutely terrible things, absolutely wreck your eyelashes so um, they just made the matters worse and I gave up on um, extensions and thought oh well you know soldier on just keep on looking for thicker mascaras with all the fibers and all the undercoats and all the rest of it to try and give me some eyelashes and then I found this stuff about oh gosh it's this year um, in fact I think it was probably during lockdown I saw it um, advertised online read a review, thought, hmm, sounds like it's worth a go, ordered it, came from the States, took forever to come. I've now discovered you can get it on Amazon, it comes the next day, <laughs> typical. And honestly, it is absolutely amazing. Um, hang on. Right, I'm going to zoom in as far as I can. Can you see? Amazing, insanely long eyelashes. And loads more of them as well. They're not nearly as sparse as they used to be. Um, so they're longer, they're thicker, there's more of them. And I promise you, they were not like this earlier this year. It really is that stuff that's done it. And then this bag is all my hair stuff. So I've got my own little travel hairdryer. Depending on where we're staying as to what the quality of the hairdryer provided is like. Um, and I've also got an extra long lead on that because so often you go to a hotel and the mirror is miles away from the nearest plug socket. So you kind of almost need an extension lead to be able to reach. Um, and then usual uh, blow drying accoutrements, the good old dim and brush. What did we do without the dim and brush? And the Kent little sausage brush for, for blow drying your hair under. Um, oh, this stuff is great. I love this stuff too. Um, it's just, I've been using this for years. Again, another thickening product. Um, and this, oh, this is another one of my Desert Island Hero products. Freeze and Shine, Paul Mitchell. 
and honestly once you've got your hair all as you want it ladle that on as I do and you could go in a wind tunnel and it ain't budging however that is not a good look um, especially when you know you end up with a bird wing on your fringe so I tend to put it on and then rake my fingers through it to break it up to soften it but what it does is it makes your hair waterproof maybe not quite waterproof but certainly um, humidity and damp air you know when it's just sort of mizzling um, because it's full of silicon so it basically coats your hair in silicon which actually cumulatively isn't great for your hair however i use a product every well, couple of weeks that um, gets rid of absolutely everything it's a sort of detox thing i get from da daniel galvin but i'll talk about that another time um, but no i think the benefits outweigh the downsides with this stuff it's just incredible and uh, i just find my fine flyaway waspy waspy wispy yeah wispy hair <laughs> I'm absolutely lost without that. So I buy enormous bottles and then I fill all these little ones up. So I've got one in my handbag, one in here, uh, one in the car, you name it again. I've got them secreted away everywhere. Um, so yeah, and apart from that, I always have an international adapter with my phone charger in it. That little box contains um, some spare earrings, some just some little studs, and some spare um, cufflinks for Gary. And then there's um, a swimsuit, because the number of times we've gone somewhere and they've actually got a spa or a swimming pool, and I think, oh damn, I didn't bring a swimming costume. So now I've got one in my suitcase at all times. I always travel with a flannel, just to remind me, if I'm going away for any length of time, I'll take several. And then this little bag is quite handy because once you've used it, it's all wet and that's waterproof. So you can tuck your, your wet flannel in there. Um, so yeah, so that little lot basically lives, oh, some um, uh, reusable cotton pads for getting your makeup off and whatnot. Um, oh yes, and of course, I'm always getting bitten. I have terrible problems with bites, get infected and end up getting cellulitis. Um, so I'm absolutely paranoid about getting bitten. So I've always got mozzie sprays and this is a great one because it's a roll on, so it's very portable and you can, you don't have to breathe it in. So yes, that little lot basically is in there all the time. Right, I've decided that actually I do not want to go to London with umpteen pairs of shoes and handbags and God knows what else. Um, and that I do need to be a bit sensible considering we're up, up there for one night. So this is what I've settled on. So um, I'm only going to take the one handbag. I'll go with everything. <laughs> Claim that 
dust mistake on every man. Now this is the point where I was going to insert all the lovely videos that i would made at number 16 hotel in Kensington. However, I cocked up and I didn't actually record a thing. Well, my feet, some carpet, a corgi, but nothing very useful. Fortunately, I took loads of photos. Um, so I'm going to have to be a little bit inventive and creative here and use my photos to tell you about this gorgeous, gorgeous place. Um, so, Kit Kemp, as I mentioned, is self-taught. And so she never learnt the rules, but she just has this unbelievable um, innate sense of, of style and she just breaks every rule in the book and it works. It's certainly not minimalist. Um, it's uh, very busy. If you don't like busy interiors, you won't like it. But if you love to have lots of things to look at and a really rich, multi-layered room environment where every time you look you can see something else to go and have a, a, a close gander at um then this is for you and the artwork i mean she's just an incredible and her husband um collector of artwork and we're not talking about big you know thousands of pounds worth of oil paintings we're talking about patronizing individual artists and artisans and they go around the world collecting just the most amazing mixture of stuff. So, um, there are certain themes in certain rooms, but otherwise it is just complete mishmash. And it just, as I say, it just works. I love the frames and the way things are mounted. I think sometimes the artist does that, but not always. I think there's a lot of things here where, you know, she's actually done the, the framing. I love this one. I think this probably would have been the artist, but it's um, given that we love our horse racing. I just think that this is just um, such fun, uh, framed in astroturf. It just makes me smile. So, yeah, you get the gist. It's it's just, uh, and I particularly like the fact that she um, uses old furniture and upcycles it. So you'll get a very traditional armchair, and you can see from the legs that it's lived, and it's got some history, which I think is nice that they haven't ironed all that out. And then they've covered it in this incredible fabric, very, very contemporary, jazzy, quite you know colorful or, or ethnic fabric that just wouldn't go with a traditional queen anne style wing back armchair but it does it just looks great i think i love it um now the bedrooms this is the room we were in and oh my god that bed was so comfortable it really was oh the Everything is just incredible quality. The mattresses, the pillows, the duvets, the linen. Oh, they even provide a pillow spray um, in the bathroom, the towels, the great water pressure, all the door handles and the taps. It's just every single little touch point is pure quality. Um, and speaking of the bathrooms, now there is one thing which is um, a bit of a trademark, that granite. They use it everywhere, all the bathrooms in all the hotels, including the public loos when you go to eat in the restaurant. Um, yeah, just uh, they must buy whole, well, truckloads of the stuff. Um, and the other two things which are a real trademark, uh, they're always different, but the, there's the fact that they're there. There's a, these enormous headboards. They're incredible headboards that are huge, uh, usually all sorts of interesting shapes and covered in these amazing fabrics again. And to go with them, in every single bedroom, there is one of these mannequins, sort of tailor's dummy, covered in the same fabric. Um, so you can hang your clothes where you don't. It's just, just an objet d'art in the room. Um, it's just a really nice little touch, really. Um, and it's, it's actually become part of their brand identity. It's in the, in the logo. So, um, yeah, every single thing about this place was just such a pleasure. The staff were great, the food was great. We had breakfast and we had, I think, the lunch the day we arrived. Um, and, yeah, just absolutely, in my book, five stars, even though it's not, I think, a five-star hotel as such. And I've stayed in a lot of very swanky hotels in my time. But this one's just, I don't know, all the Firmdales are just, unique they're just so different no cookie cutter approach to anything at all 
So yeah, big, big fan of Kit Kent. So this is where I was gonna drop in the video of us arriving at the iconic Ivy restaurant. Um, but guess what? Yep, I did it again. I will get better at this. I will get better at this. So in case you're not aware, but the Ivy has been around since it opened in 1917. Um, it's, a, it's a world famous, iconic restaurant, basically, um, much imitated. And um, it's particularly famous for its interior because it's pure art deco. Um, these uh, um, stained glass windows, um, particularly, it's famed for. And things like this gorgeous brass grill on the, the staircase, look at that. Isn't that stunning? Oh, all, all absolutely gorgeous. It was actually really quite gratifying to see how busy it was there. It was, it was jumping, it was a lovely atmosphere. Um, it was like the old days, because since um, lockdown, every time you eat out, you don't really get very many people. Oh, the good old flambe. You cannot beat a flambe, can you? It just always makes everybody stop and look and watch and take photos and videos. Lovely bit of theatre. No matter where you go in the world, you always enjoy a good old flambe. Now they have um, a menu that changes all the time, but there are the classics, the Ivy classics that they've always done since time immemorial. I always have the ox cheek stew every time I come here, and it is yum. And of course, the the famous um, cheese souffle. And I'm a bit of a connoisseur of cheese souffles, and I've had lots of cheese souffles just in so many different places. But I have to say, I think the Ivy does the best. Oh, yum! Makes my mouth drool just watching it. Ah, oh, and home again. That was a lovely trip. Oh, I did enjoy that. It was only 36 hours. We left at, what was it, 10 o'clock yesterday morning and we got home at half uh, past six this evening. And, uh, but, you know, it was just enough. It was just a nice little break and a fix, a fix of London. I do, I have to confess, I do miss London sometimes. I, I wouldn't want to go back to live. Um, but it's nice to go for a visit and we used to go up all the time and of course this year we haven't been able to for obvious reasons so yeah it was just very strange really to oh god it's so sad though oh my goodness walking around just all the shops and restaurants and bars and cafes that have closed down just closed down i mean they're just not there anymore boarded up um and you know very few people very few cars it feels like early sunday morning really um the other thing we did while we were up there i haven't told you about we did today was um the kimono exhibition at the vna now the vna is probably one of my favorite places in the world i absolutely love the vna i'm a member um and it is for anybody who doesn't know it is the museum for all the creative industries really and it's anybody that's even remotely interested in design it's mecca um i mean so fashion jewelry ceramics glass furniture sculpture um oh just just you name it most fascinating i love the jewelry department as well oh yeah well i would wouldn't i um but the fashion uh anyway anyway you get the picture oh and the shop <laughs> the v a shop so much of my costume jewelry has come from the v a shop they do some really squinky stuff really funky unusual arty farty gallery owner type um statement necklaces and that sort of thing and massive great big a yeah so i've got qu quite a lot from there over the course of time um so the reason I haven't done the kimono exhibition in this video is because, um, well, there's a lot here already. And also because it occurred to me that I was going to make a little bit more of that and I'll do it in probably the next video. Um, because walking around looking at the kimono exhibition, I was thinking, and then Gary said out loud, and that happens an awful lot. I'm thinking something and he's saying it or vice versa. It was so simpatico. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, yeah, he said, this is like your wardrobe. And basically, I suddenly, bing, 
Oh my God. Yeah, I just didn't realise how much my wardrobe is influenced by, well, Japanese design, for one thing. I love Isimeaki. I love very sculptural things. I don't think I've got an awful lot that's like that, to be fair, but a few things I can think of. Um, but more the, yeah, the sort of the flowy, flowy coaty thing. I've always really liked that look. Um, again, it's very 1920s and I've just got so much in my wardrobe, which is more than a nod to the kimono. And I've just been downstairs unpacking um, from a trip and putting everything away. And in the process, I've been dredging out Oh yeah, there's this and oh god yeah, th th this this is very kimono. Oh oh, and there's this and before I knew where I was, um, our full post to bed had got quite a a lineup of outfits, um, or elements of outfits, and uh, so I thought I'm going to have some fun next couple of days. I'm going to get do the old dressy uppy thing, and um, I will show you some ensembles that are yeah would not have looked out of place in that exhibition actually um so that'll be for next time or it might be the one after i've got to work out what i'm going to put in which one at the moment but um uh yeah so we'll come back to that now before i say good night um there's just one thing i wanted to leave you with and it's picking up on where i started with the first video the breast cancer thing uh, now, it's a huge topic and it's not something I would ever tackle all in one go um, because um, A, I think then you don't take it in and also it's just too much all in one go. It's, it's such a big topic. So I've broken it down into bite-sized chunks. Interesting um, expression to use in connection with foods. But anyway, um, the first thing I want to say and share with you is probably the most important thing of all and that's detection if i tell you that in july 2010 i had a mammogram that came back all clear you're fine off you go see you in five years time and on the uh 18th of december they removed five tumors and yeah my lymph nodes that's quite chilling, really, when you think about it, isn't it? Now, I'm not saying don't go and have a mammogram because you have anything, anything they're offering you. You just take it. All I would say is don't rely on it, especially if you're a fuller figure girl. Because if you've got mammoth memories like I had, then um, one of the limitations of... Um, ultrasound scans and mammograms and anything that's a scan is that if there's an awful lot there there's a lot of tissue it struggles to penetrate all the way through um, and also um, if your boobs are um, how can I put this okay so when I was pregnant I had really bad mastitis and as a result I had as a lovely old Irish nurse once described it, the lumpiest tits she'd ever come across. Honestly, they were a bag of bloody marbles. Um, so yeah, I already had lots and lots of lumps. The thing is, if you check yourself, and ideally you should start when you're young, because if you spend your whole life in the shower, autopilot, not even thinking about it, really systematically or automatically, with the pads of your fingers just all the way around just you know concentric circles work your way in up into your armpit you will get very familiar with your own topography your own lumps and bumps and you will notice that something changes because that is the key that's what you're looking for um so i didn't used to do that a lot of women i know I'm always having this conversation with everybody because I'm preaching the gospel. I'm sorry if I sound preachy, but I'm preaching. Um, I just don't want anyone to have to go through what I went through if they can avoid it. Um, 
So if you're going to get it, you're going to get it. And, and when I say it's, it's more about detection than prevention, we could talk about prevention another time, but I'm actually a bit sceptical about that. I'm not sure you can really. But you can if you... I, the thing is, you, we talk about lifestyle, but I know people who've lived such abstemious lives, didn't smoke, didn't drink, and they still got it. So anyway, we'll talk about that because there's, there's another whole... There's another whole area which is, there's quite a lot to um, and that I found out an awful lot about that I will share with you another time, but not this time. Um, so for tonight, I'm going to stick to one message, which is check yourself. So, yeah. So I'll leave you with that thought. So go and have a, a shower or a bath or whatever before you go to bed. And have a good old grope or just go to bed and let someone else do it. <laughs> More the merrier. <laughs> um, so, hmm. ah, yes, and on that note, I'm going to say good night and I will see you again, hopefully, very soon. And, oh, and um, sorry, I keep banging on about this, but please, could you do the old thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already? Um, I think lots of people have been struggling, or at least my friends, because we're all geriatrics and a lot of them are YouTube virgins, um, are actually struggling a bit with how you do all of that. But um, in fact, I'm even thinking I might do a video on it at some point soon. <laughs> oh dear, what will we do without 20 something kids? Um, anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, so if you would do that for me, that would be absolutely great. I'd uh, really appreciate it. And um, so yeah, night night. Bye. Please pardon me when I'm watching.